Why do we get jelly legs when we try and run after cycling? Do we really look as uncoordinated as we feel? Well, it's time to do our own duathlon experiment and compare our running gait before a cycle leg and after. Then I think we'll throw it to you guys. You be the judges of just how badly it affects our running. Okay, we could have headed to the lab to get some really accurate numbers, but I actually feel that a real world situation is gonna give us far more information in the whole. So we're not gonna have accurate VO2 data. However, we've got a lot of things to make up for that. So we're gonna be using heart rate monitors, our watches, as well as some insoles, which will measure variations in our gait. Then we've also got whatever our cameraman can capture, plus obviously how we're gonna feel. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say, and fairly obvious that doing another leg dominant sport between the first run and the second run is going to have some negative effects on a run. I don't think we need to prove that. But what I'm interested in and want to look at today is just how it affects that second run and just how badly. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm looking forward to finding out. But whilst we get changed and get warmed up, we'd love it if you want to support the channel by giving this video a like and subscribing. Okay, we are warmed up and ready to go, or as ready as we'll ever be. Now, a standard duathlon is a 10K run, a 40K bike, followed by a 5K run. And then you've got sprint duathlon, which is half of that distance. Yeah, however, we're going slightly different again. We're going slightly shorter, partly for time efficiency, but also because the distance that we've chosen, we'll still get plenty and adequate data for this little experiment. So we're gonna be doing a three kilometer run followed by a 10 and a half kilometer bike and then finishing with a one and a half kilometer run because we're on a one and a half kilometer circuit. Yeah. So, should we do this, Heather? Are you ready to go hard? <laughs> this is in the name of science, Mark. Right, three, two, one, let's go! <laughs> Well, there have actually been a few scientific studies into the effects of the bike leg. One showing that the amount of oxygen required for the same pace goes up on the second run, indicating fatigue and reduced running economy. And an observational study showed that there was more variability within gait pattern on the second run, especially in that initial kilometre, which could be contributing to that uncoordinated feeling that you get. So whilst Heather is finishing up, I thought it might be interesting to look at the pace of some recent duathlon champions in their first run compared to their second. So in the 2023 World Elite Duathlon Championships, which had a 5k first run, 2.5k second run, the male winner was Mario Mola. He ran 14.10 for the 5k, that's 2.50 per kilometre pace, and then 7.31 for the two and a half kilometers. That's three minute per kilometer pace. Whilst the female winner, Emma Pallant, ran 16.48 for the 5K, that's 3.22 per kilometer pace, and then 8.54 for the two and a half K, that's 3.34 per kilometer pace. Now bear in mind that is a 10 second per kilometer difference for the men and a 12 second per kilometer difference for the women. Now I think though it's time we see just how our times compare, not in speed, but in the difference between each, of course. Okay, there were slightly too many numbers to digest when we were a little bit oxygen deprived. So we've come back, had a shower, and had time to dissect some well, of Some of this. us have had a shower. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, Sorry, there's a, probably not a big enough gap here. <laughs> anyway, um, so numbers wise, some things surprised me, some less so. Um, my second run was four seconds per kilometre slower, which thought oh, might have been a bit more, but um, my running economy was a little bit lower, which I would have expected. Maybe a bigger gap from what I felt, but more on that right, um, later on. Um, I was surprised that my average heart rate was actually bang on the same on really? both, and my average cadence was exactly the same for both runs. However, my second run saw a massive spike in my cadence for the first 300 meters, yeah. and then I think to make it the average the same, it probably dropped off more at the end, so that was quite interesting. My um, foot strike changed slightly. Um, actually, in theory, we got a little bit better. I went a bit more to midfoot than I was um, previously. Um, yeah, those are the numbers for me okay. that really stood out. What number stood out uh, for you? Yeah, so 
<laughs> significant drop off in pace. I was 314 per kilometer for the first, and then 326 per kilometer. So that's a 12 second per kilometer drop off in pace. Uh, my heart rate was kind of okay on the first one, 154, but shot up to 174 on the second Ooh. run. So 20 beats per minute difference there. Uh, cadence, bang on the same. Um, and there was a drop off in power uh, by about 27 watts um, from first to second, which is an interesting one, the whole power. Yeah. Kind of, it's something I guess not, we haven't looked at enough, but should we hold the same pace? And there was a lower power, be more efficient, but my pace did drop off a lot. So it's a hard one to kind mm. of decipher there. Um, there's a slight change in my foot strike. So I was 94% midfoot on the first, 99 on the second, and my pronation increased ever so slightly on the second. Okay, so, so maybe showing him yeah, a little bit of fatigue. A bit of fatigue, yeah. But we also did interestingly you ride different bikes and different shoes, which people might have noticed. And yeah, weirdly, I, I rocked up in carbon plated shoes, but on a road bike. It's <laughs> kind of like I got it all a bit mixed well, up. Well, I did it? the other way with a TT bike and my training, training, yeah. running shoes. But um, we just thought it'd be nice to have to yeah. mix it up and keep it different. But, I mean, how did you feel? Because I think that was a that's a big part of it. Yeah, so I I was really surprised to see so little difference on some of my mm. metrics here and biomechanically well clearly it wasn't as bad as it felt because yeah. as I ran off the bike there was just that I mean the classic you're being you've yeah. you've done that hard run, you've then been hunched over on the bike, obviously working those muscles pretty hard and you get off the bike and it's really hard to kind of like stand tall. Mm. Felt like I was sitting low also kind of like sitting lower into in back into the yeah. stride. Um really hard to spring off the ground. So uh, really surprised to see those numbers not be affected mm. as more as much. Um yeah. what my kind of takeaway was I I've I felt like if we carried on going perhaps another kilometre or two in hindsight, I think we might have started to see things unravel because there are things like the pronation, it was only a 5% drop off, mm. but my pronation isn't that good even on a Those shoes day. highlight it, don't they, sadly? Um, <laughs> so I, I suspect things may start to go yeah. worse. But I mean, interestingly, obviously the pros who train for it all the time, they were they were had a fairly considerable drop off on their pace mm. at their second. Obviously we don't have the rest of their metrics. I mean, I was surprised that my drop off wasn't more, but I, and also, because I went out really hard on my first run. And, you did? And, are, you, are you right yeah. on my heels? Like... <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But, so I was like, oh my God, it's going to be like, my second run's going to be so much slower. Yeah. And I mean, all I can put it down to is I'm not very bike fit. So maybe I didn't ride hard enough on the bike. And then that was like a recovery or something. And I also now do a lot more endurance stuff. So going straight into a 3K hard run felt awful. And weirdly, the second run, I was like, oh, I'm kind of carrying now. So maybe I'm the wrong person to test this on. Like yeah, anyway. well, um, I mean, running off the bike at any point is tough, but mm. then throwing in an, a run beforehand mm -hmm. just hold, throw, well, adds a whole other kind of dilemma or yeah. um, challenge to the equation. Uh, so obviously including brick sessions and maybe doing this run, mm -hmm. bike, run, bike in your training will help if you are specifically focusing on things like duathlons. Uh, but pacing, from my experience, is the well. most important, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't pace that one particularly well, but actually, ironically, I did use to pace triathlons quite well in my career and had some quite good results off just simply letting people go on that first run and actually jumping onto the bike, feeling strong, ready to punch on through, and actually felt strong as a result on the runoff. The one thing that I have often struggled with um, is cramping. I always have, yeah. I, I sweat quite a lot, and um, I would always have to stretch out a lot on the bike because you've you've used your muscles so mm. much and so hard on that first run and it all sort of seems you're just up. going into that yeah, flex yeah. position. Yeah, particularly yeah. around the hip flexors, the calves, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so stretching them out when you get an opportunity on the bike can actually help. Even in a triathlon, I would often do that on a long distance. Whereas okay. on a descent, I'd get up out of the saddle, stretch the calves out. Anyway, waffling on. You didn't manage to do that over that, that 10K yeah. that we did. Um, I, yeah, I think finally, if you are sort of really struggling with the the position, then have a look at maybe getting a bike fit as well. And maybe that's maybe that's the difference that we saw that mine was a bit less in the drop-off because I was on a TT bike on the road. But there's so many variations. And I think it was just a, an interesting experiment, something that I wanted to look at. And I kind of now feel like I need to delve a bit more well, into Well, the worrying thing is, I think we have both highlighted that we need to run further next time mm. and maybe okay really maybe we'll maybe we'll just there. leave it there but um you guys would love to know what you think from our if you could see much difference in our running gates don't yeah. be too mean <laughs> please but um hopefully you have enjoyed it we'd love it if you want to support the channel by giving us a like